Today's video is all about Tominet, making freedom a reality. In today's video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into this project, figuring out whether we should be buying the dip in preparation of this bull run. However, guys, we're going to be looking at some of the value propositions, the team, the tokenomics, and much, much more. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the altcoins looking for opportunities. Whether we go up or down, bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any volatility. And of course, guys, today we're going to be doing a deep dive. I want to take a look at this project, right? It's called Tommy Net. The token is called uh, the token ticker is Tommy and it, it does really fit within a narrative that could should be very very hot right now okay it's all about freedom uh, it's about freedom of speech it's about you know decentralizing our internet and of, of course that is definitely something that we are looking for in, in especially with all the threats that we're getting with uh regards to uh defi uh the dex narrative of course and all that so you know i've been looking for solutions to that problem we know that the sec is coming after defi we know that that's probably their next target you know it, it, it is something that they mentioned so what kind of solutions can we have to this problem well we know that DeFi in general you know requires a website and we know that that having a website that domain is governed by a central identity and at the end of the day it is owned by a central organization now um what about if our websites were completely decentralized meaning the protocols that it governs it the um, whole entire infrastructure the domains themselves and uh, every aspect about the way we uh, basically compute online the web you know make it completely decentralized now that is a big feat that is definitely a big agenda and tommy net does really try to you know complete the whole solution to that problem with an, a massive ecosystem so um, we're going to be doing a a deep dive of course and we're going to be looking at some of the value the, the value propositions the team the tokenomics and much much more of course we'll take a look at the white papers give you a brief overview of what this project is about of course but we're going to be using the website we're going to be using the website as our main platform to get navigate this deep dive okay so let's begin let's see what we can uh check out here as we scroll through tommy net an alter alternative basically internet controlled by a dao so guys what, what i really want you to do is put the concept of a dao at the front front of four front of your mind whenever we're reading whatever we're talking about you have to understand that this at the end of the day this project is a decentralized autonomous organization an organization a business that is going to be run through a dao protocol basically giving the um the active members of the dao control over what happens with this business how they operate okay so they're they're trying to decentralize the operations behind this organization which at the end of the day is something very notable uh, you know obviously if you're here in crypto uh, crypto land you appreciate decentralization you also appreciate you know organizations that are trying to achieve such agendas but at the end of the day there's a little bit more to be said okay so let's continue going down uh just by looking at we have browsers domains payment system nodes and at the end of the day that is the bread and butter of their products if you kind of go down here you can sc uh, basically scroll through their products they have a browser very it's a fork of the brave browser so essentially a browser that you know uses its um, own uh, direction not part of the same group of um browsers like chrome and others it basically allows them to take full control how the browsers connect to the internet which is great uh, D, uh, T, uh, uh dns which is basically a domain name system that is governed again by this dao right so that you're able to register domains and use these domains on their browser so one of the issues right now that we're having with for example chrome let's just use chrome as an example um if you were to register a domain and basically have a domain on let's say unstoppable domains which is very similar to tommy in the sense that you could uh, uh, mint uh, your own domain you won't be able to use that domain using a typical browser unfortunately it's not you can't list it on the system right so at the end of the day right now what they're trying to do is say no worries we'll make our own system out of this we'll register the domains and we'll make our own system that our browser can support 
So essentially making a decentralized type of network system. Now, I know some of you might be thinking about, hold on, our network system is controlled at the end of the day by physical aspects, basically the cables that run through our homes and run through our streets and so on. And then ultimately, you know, the satellite dishes and all of that. And they're basically provided to us through our, um, you know, network service provider, our internet service provider. But that's not, that's the next step. For me, that's not where we're going, right? There are other solutions to that problem that, other uh you know projects are trying to tackle i think what they're trying to do here is maintain the use of the traditional network meaning the physical aspect while decentralizing the way we use protocol okay so at the end of the day governing our www our internet all right so let's continue here we have pay of course a nice wallet that can integrate into the um, ecosystem we have nodes again nodes are necessary to uh, get the let's call it the the power of the network uh, flowing we want uh, m participants we want validators we want you know um computers let's say on this network to do the work to do some work so that's what these nodes are about they're definitely available for purchase i think they're sold out already so pretty bullish at the end of the day we'll take a look at that and then you have the gems the gems is another product which is basically a decentralized social media decentralized uh, media platform very similar to youtube or something like that you know where you can post videos and, and so on but it's decentralized we're governed by the dow so all these products right now are governed by this dow in um using tommy coin and it, it, there's a little bit more to be said it's not just tommy coin the the tokenomics we got to talk about that of course there's a bit of confusion there's a bit of ambiguity there's a bit of everything there and it's definitely confusing even for newcomers to the space as to how they're distributing some of these tokens so we'll talk about that in a second but of course as you click you you're going to get um, introduced to some of the, um, you know, services and products that they offer here um, under the Tommy Net uh, brand. OK, um, again, the nodes, we can check those out products. Go check out those nodes. If you want to look at them, they just look like mini uh, miniature computers and they are sold out. Basically, you hold a node, you get rewarded with uh, Tommy um, coins. OK, so that's basically very typical, very typical. OK, so let's continue. Um, alternative. OK, controlled by a DAO. So again, the gems, the mesh cloud hybrid, the Tommy Net. This this is where they're trying to make this analogy that it's a complete system, an intelligent, complete system. Okay, very true. It, it is a very ambitious project, as we as can be seen. You know, basically connecting, um, creating our own network of co computing and uh, online solutions. Highly necessary, but a very, very ambitious project. Okay, it reminds me very, very similar to um, ICP, Internet Computers. At the end of the day, that is a very ambitious project as well. I'm not trying to compare it with price and sentiment but you know it is definitely one of those projects that are uh, trying to achieve a huge huge um you know target at the end of the day okay so again a bit of repetition you know your domains your browser um your wallet your uh node and your gems so uh, premium content platform from top creators and publishers decentralized decentralized okay so that's that those are their main bread and butter obviously we know what's happening with the, with the youtube you know what, what's going on with youtube at the end of the day you got to stick with the narrative if you don't stick with the narrative there's there's consequences and here we have a scenario where maybe gems can provide us an out Lit where there's a decentralized scenario that is governed by the DAO. Okay, so for, for those of you that are interested and curious how they're going to regulate, let's say, inappropriate content, it's governed by the DAO. We'll look at the white papers. They do mention that it's just governed by the DAO and voted. Obviously, DAOs are running run by votes. Okay, so let's continue. It is featured on these major platforms. Of course, some typical, some, you know, crypto-based great i don't really like this aspect right here you know the partners there's no clarity as to what their you know engagement is with these partners particularly Chainlink, particularly certic i went on the discord i tried to get some information nobody really knows exactly how they are you know is this a strategic partner or are they just kind of like you know they got their certificate from certic and all of a sudden you know their partners that this is an example of when you know you have to really think critically about their partnerships if they're value or they're if they're strategic in this case i don't see any strategy here as to why they're going to be 
including Chainlink as an oracle to the Tommy Net uh, partners list. Anybody in technically anybody that uses the Ethereum network and uses Chainlink as an oracle is a partner. Guys, that's not a very high value partner in that case because it's a very neutralized uh, value proposition to the Tommy Net. So at the end of the day, what we look for when we talk about partners is how are they working together to scaffold one one another to the next level, right? So uh, Tommy Net using, let's say, um, a project that, you know, maybe does... Um, quantum computing or some heavy duty computing processing right that would be really interesting to see how maybe they're but they do the very similar thing they're offering a very similar uh, value proposition so it's all also like partners should help each other not just one-sided or just to have a logo here i feel like a lot of these like even polygon how are they working with Polygon? I really would like to know. Nobody really knows. There's no documentation. There's no research. There's nothing on their socials. There's nothing really. They do have a few. I think it's DWF Labs where they kind of talk about, but it's all funding. It's all money, you know, but getting funding and, you know, maybe a little bit of expertise. Uh, they talk about, you know, some uh, individuals joining their, their team to give them uh, consultations, but that's not a partner. That's definitely not a partner. So we have to look very strategically as to what we define as a partner. Partner. That because that's pretty much the end of the website very similar very basic very um you know straightforward which is totally fine but at the end of the day we need a little bit more right so let's do that we talked about here we're on the home page we talked about the products is the token and uh buy the token obviously listed on many exchanges guys a lot of exchanges which is good uh the majority of them uh, the majority of the exchanges that exist right now are listed except uh coinbase and binance i don't see them here uh those are the two heavyweights obviously that would be great to see that happen we may see tommy's price go up once that happens but at the end of the day having kucoin bybit and the rest of mexi all these are pretty much uh you know big big heavyweights in the exchange market right now and they do have a, offer a lot of liquidity okay so we'll take a look at more of the token info uh, obviously you can get more information on coin market cap and coin gecko and staking this is one of the utilities of the token the tommy token is the staking okay obviously more utility we have the the DAO, which is the main over you know overlapping or over compassing type of contract that we got going here is the DAO. You know, at the end of the day, your holder, you're able to vote, you're able able to vote on uh, their consensus mechanism, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and then the pioneers, guys. This is a whole different level of you know type of distribution, and I I don't even know what to call it, right? It's a very unique uh, way of distribution, but we'll talk about that in a second, and then the community feel free to check that out and the about there's nothing about the team here guys don't expect anything they're completely anonymous there's no doxing whatsoever there's no linkedin account there's nothing and they're proud of it and they're proud to say that they're completely anonymous and they respect decentralization and by that fact they feel like they don't even need to be doxed or be uh fully let's say uh transparent at the end of the day the one of the founders are is definitely known right he makes himself um pretty public on um on x and he has a couple of articles written about him and guys there's a bit of negativity with regards to that we might as well jump into the fact that the team is not doxxed and the the one of the co-founders the founders is right now in under some legal issues okay and i, I would like to show a little bit more information but i'm not going to do that at the end of the day you could do a qu quick quick google search about the co-founder uh, one of the founders here of tommy net and that he's having some issues legally in um i think it's israel and basically with prior projects you know, prior projects that were potentially deemed as scams. Guys, I'm not trying to spread FUD, but do your research. I've done it. It's there. There's nothing else to be said other than clear fact. And it's a very recent type of allegation. And I'll just say it's just an allegation as far as I'm concerned at this point. And then there are other legal aspects, other, other legal issues that, of course, I don't want to talk about here on the channel. But feel free to go check that out. That is very a very negative thing. Obviously, innocent until proven guilty. But one thing that I do want to make it a very very clear is that it doesn't matter the price may fluctuate based on this issue that this individual has um with the law okay so we got to be transparent we got to be real about it is this a, a good look for tommy net not really to be honest one of the heavyweights of the team right now is getting a bit of um, an issue with the law so let's move on from that 
Take it as you will. Do your research. Obviously, um, you know, dig deep with with, with regards to that matter. Th- let me know in in, in the descri- in the comment section if you feel such things will affect the price. Okay, I personally do, but let me know. Chime in. Feel free to chime in. All right, let's continue. Uh, so we're bouncing around a little bit, of course, deviating a little bit because there's nothing about the team. So I might as well talk about that, and then you can get a little bit more about about about. Okay, let's jump right into the wiki, which is pretty much the white paper. There's an official white paper that's an, a, a, like a PDF, but this is a very interactive type of Git book, which is very similar, okay? I just feel like it's a little bit easier for us here uh, as a deep dive to kind of navigate some of the major points here that we can talk about. Obviously, there's an abstract. It is a decentralized um, type of um, ambition, right? World Wide Web designed as an alternative to the governed, controlled, government-controlled, censored web. So it's the opposite. It doesn't want to be a government-controlled, censored web, uh, so which is good. It combines web two with web three technology uh for a privacy and it, it is as, um you know a, focusing on privacy and self-governance obviously as a DAO and so on and there's nodes all over the world to give it a lot of decentralization Tomina combines the best of web two establishing uh of hardware for their mesh network which we talked about the nodes um uh, Tominet leverages uh, the dns protocol for basic internet tor and starkware for pro- zero knowledge proof so at the end of the day there is it is a layer two on ethereum and and they um, basically use other protocols like uh, their, their own proprietary DNS protocol and Tor and Starware to give themselves an edge, you know, and give themselves this uh, their abilities to provide the service that they want to provide, which is a decentralized web. OK, so it's a combination. Basically, it's a layer two and they use their own um, recipe to achieve what they want to achieve. Um, one thing that we need to know is... Um, in order to be free, people need to uh, have a say in the decision uh, that affect them. So basically, again, a DAO, by creating a fully independent governing body made up of net citizens, basically, uh, Tominet ensures long-term uh, viability of the infrastructure and the long-term freedom of the people who use it. Basically, overall, a free internet. Now, one thing that we have to understand is, of course, what, how are we going to, you know, how are they going to regulate the nonsense that we don't want to see on the internet? And it's all governed by the DAO, okay? They're going to vote. Obviously, all of that is based on voting. And let's see, Web2 is fragile. They explained the issue that the problem that exists, which is very important because I do talk about on the channel significantly that we need to have a problem in order to find a solution. And they identify the problem very, very clearly. And they use really, really good examples. I'm not going to get into them, but you you understand what you can basically pick up on some of the things that you know using the words PayPal and and Yahoo and and many others. Okay, they want to completely remove the control structure. Okay, and make it independent. That's good. Web three. That's the solution is some sort of Web3 protocol, some sort of Web3 solution. And that's the opportunity. And you can read this secondary as miners improve their efficiency. So you can talk about how they're going to um, basically use the Web3 to uh, get this to happen. And they identify the major limitations of the, using the AWS and Azure. So, of course, um, something to be aware of. They want to basically be a competitor to these typical centralized databases systems okay so when the majority of our websites that do exist are on these big platforms so think about that okay opportunity this is their opportunity they're leveraging web3 tech on top okay on top of web2 this is what the thing is so until we can actually find a decentralized way to to basically decentralize our internet connection we're going to have to use the the existing protocols and kind of make a layer two on top of them. And this is what basically they are trying to achieve. OK, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. Adding adding NFTs, they add, definitely added an NFT to their um, their ecosystem. And I feel like that's probably the most convoluted way to um, think about things is to think of it as an NFT. But perhaps it is the best way to, to talk about it using the fact that they use it as an example. OK, so. So um, let's see if I can find some good, good quotes. But the solution, the solution is Tommy Ned's goal is to allow people to access any website in the world, no matter where they are from, without limitations, building their online presence, okay, develop and operate internet businesses targeted to any country, manage their own digital identity, and the list goes on. Very, very freedom. 
freedom-based uh, ideas okay so really good stuff internet protocols infrastructure tokenized economy independent dns based on address system zero knowledge proof hardware mesh network so the list goes on um existing let's see what this is going this is how they're going to plan on integrating to the existing www infrastructure which is something that we obviously need to find the solution to um, as well but one step at a time, right? Uh, controlled and governed. I think this is where we're leading into some of the things that we really are interested in. So banning, so uh, the initial guidelines are as follows. This is where the DAO is going to come in. We're going to ban, obviously, any type of criminal, um, you know, type of behavior. You can read these three points. I don't even want to say them, but they're here, okay? These are the things, types of things that the DAO will vote on. And as a, you know, a community, basically, um, you don't have these guidelines, um, let's call it uh, enforced, okay? Let's put it that way, as a community, not as an ad individual identity. So that's good. They're def definitely trying to embrace that decentralized aspect. Now the blockchain, let's get into uh, some of the tech aspect. You know, like I mentioned, it is an Ethereum blockchain, as stated right here, it leverages the Ethereum blockchain, but it uses Starkware for privacy and fast transaction and low transaction fees. So it's a layer two that couples in other aspects, right? Now the Pioneer, this is what I want really, we, things totally got, uh, you know, shifted around, took a left turn. Pioneer NFTs are governance rights tokens, okay? So uh, uh, basically you have an have NFT that is a basic uh, type of token that resembles um, some sort of rights that you may have. In combination with identity wallet, Tommy tokens and Pioneer NFTs provide a basis for flexible DAO-based governance. So let's say that you own this Pioneer NFT, you are part of the club. Essentially, you're part of the club and you were rewarded for purchasing this NFT, okay, through to also obtaining some Tommy tokens. So not only are you an owner on NFT, think of this NFT as a pass. You are given this NFT. It looks like a, a, a pass. And you're also given some Tommy tokens for being an early adopter, a supporter of the um the the project okay so pi, uh, the pioneer is a different identity and a different type of token than the tommy tokens the tommy tokens think th think of them as currency whereas the nft think of them as a proof of membership to a a, a, a club type of thing okay so uh, pretty interesting, but nonetheless, uh, gets a little bit um, confusing. Uh, one, uh, yeah, so you get a voting token, weighted voting, quadratic voting, one person voting, ranked voting, tons of voting into this democratic process that they want to, um, you know, it starts to get really complicated with all this type of voting. Something that uh, not a lot of us are keen on, we want simple because usually when there's comp complications or there's too much depth and, you know, nooks and crannies, that's where you get vulnerabilities. That's where you get issues so for me i'm not crazy about that when things are overly complicated especially their ecosystem and the way it works it's overly done but of course that's just my opinion um just my two cents at the end of the day uh the dns addressing they want to take full control but at the end of the day it's going to be sent to some sort of let's call it um database where people can buy these uh, minted um, DNSs or domains and the person that basically um, holds or owns that domain will get a 5% uh, kickback for the sale of the domain. So I think a person, an individual has about a year to claim the domain once it's minted. Um, and if somebody goes and puts a bid on that domain within that year and outbids the initial minter, the, the, the bidder that outbid will get the domain, but the person that minted the domain will get about 5% kickback for, um, I guess, minting, right? So there's a bit of an ecosystem happening here with the buying and selling and the trading of the domains. They're trying to make it fair so an individual doesn't have the opportunity to buy up all domains and just sit on them. And squatting, of course, is a big deal. Uh, nowadays, it's quite annoying because people just buy up all kinds of domains and just sit on them and just wait for people to um, want them. And then they just jack up the prices. And that's a very unfortunate thing. So I'm feeling that they're trying to make it a, a somewhat of a fair distribution of the domains which is great okay so this, feel free to do a little bit more research on that uh just a marketplace for domains uh tommy dow a little bit more about the autonomous organization feel free to check that out but um including blockage of websites like we talked about keeping it safe and respectable 
um, distribution of different uh, of tokens, decision making, guidelines, all kinds of stuff. Every, pretty much everything is going to be run through this uh, DAO. And of course, if you're a holder of NFTs, Tommy Utility Tokens and Peer Governance M NFTs, if you're a, a part of the a Pioneer uh, crew, you're going to have a lot, uh, uh, you're going to have a membership to be able to, um, you know, participate. Uh, what else do we have? Policy updating process. Okay. All governed by the DAO. You have an art DAO. Uh, so think of these as like... Um I forget what they mentioned them. There was a good analogy. Tommy tokens, while full fungible, include artwork. So every Tommy token includes some sort of artwork, almost similar to how, let's say, a dollar bill has some of the artwork on their bill. A Tommy token will have artwork associated to each token, which, you know, at least they're trying to make be innovative and, and you know, creative here on how the tokens work. So that's pretty cool. That's an art DAO. There's a lot happening, as you can see. Tons happening. It's almost confusing. You almost can't really make make a um you know package out of this mentally because there's so much then you have the tommy browser of course that makes sense because you're selling domains and you wanted the browser to be compatible with their domains and then you have your browser where you have a wallet because of course uh we need some sort of web3 wallet to be able to transact on this browser of course so that's almost like a supportive product there and all of these three products so far are supporting one another then you have your id tommy passport so you see we're building we're the zero knowledge proof aspect Aspect. Now you have your ID identification to be a, a self-sovereign and, you know, privacy and all of this with this ID passport, tons of stuff happening. And then you have the mesh cloud where you have the... Um, the node connect that leverages the onion router protocol so i don't know if you guys remember the onion router but nonetheless the tor browser the tor protocol peer-to-peer -peer network all of this kind of stuff you know starting to build a mesh hybrid type of uh connection and you know all this guys it's just a lot just a lot it's not a negative thing completely but it is a big big project and it's a, a huge endeavor tommy nodes again back to how we're going to connect and and provide um you know the the transaction power that we need using these nodes um at the end of the day they're sold out already so they offer these nodes uh support cloud hosting uh decentralized storage um blockchain gpu mining you can see look look how much they offer here using these these computers uh consensus valid uh, validation uh vpn services and proxy services we got to talk about their validation and their consensus mechanism it is unique it's a little bit different and you may feel like it's um slightly you know centralized in the sense that individuals that have voting power are the ones that ultimately have the power to um give more to the uh, certain individuals that are contributing to the network which is if you hold hold a lot of tokens and you're staking a lot of tokens you might have too much power and that's the problem right so i don't know we'll, we'll keep that in a second we'll keep that handy and then the core team um read this um so the core team will be responsible core team tommy funding team for years they don't really give anything in fact they mentioned something not under the tom direct response such as maintaining developing the ecosystem the community uh keeping track and the project finance sales and every sector see at the end of the day the core team will be responsible for certain aspects but they don't want to be totally transparent about who they are and that's an unfortunate uh, unfortunate thing they do mention somewhere on this website and i was kind of in shock where they don't want they want to be completely anonymous and i'll see if i can find that for you guys in a second okay uh the tokenomics uh okay again voting this is with the utility the utility for this token is for voting um stakeholders including via tommy dow's treasury uh development fund again this fund a lot of these tokens have these development funds or ecosystem funds or things like that basically it's a bunch of tokens that are going to be used to to um improve or incentivize the economy or the network to grow right but again if it's governed by the dow and the dow um you know the token distribution is a bit skewed to whales the individuals that have you know a lot of the power to buy a lot of tokens then it's almost like you know a scenario where the wealthy has the control right so this is an, a little bit of an issue right a little bit of a, a something to consider okay payment uh, for uh, domain purchases products and services and fees and all that so very typical tokenomics to be to you know kind of to be said here uh, but what we got to do is focus on this last paragraph okay maybe even the second one so the pioneer tokens represent the status of the people who made the initial commitment uh, and took the risk so basically if you took risk 
you get rewarded by being a pioneer. Individuals that take risk are usually individuals that, you know, don't find it risky to spend a few thousand bucks, which are usually individuals that have money, right? So that's something to consider. Uh, projects, uh, uh, let's move on. The network pioneer tokens will have a specific governance power, okay, that the Tommy token to do, uh, do not have. So Tommy tokens do not have the same power as the pioneer tokens, specifically the ability to make proposals to the DAO and to determine the technological direction and core Tommy team over time the DAO may change government and structure so they're trying to be very democratic about things but we know that a, a democracy is very difficult when you integrate an economy a financial aspect to their democracy so that's a very very complex very uh you know a slightly you know red flagish for those individuals that don't appreciate this very typical type of structure that we've seen in our own lives right as a growing economy the to uh, the tommy uh, ecosystem is based on ongoing is issuance of tokens rather than a fixed issuance token model what does this mean no max supply guys none whatsoever the the, the dow the individuals that are Pioneers can all of a sudden make a this decision to mint more tokens, which is again a bit um, scary dilution. You know, future dilution, dumping them on the market. I I really don't really like this aspect. Giving um, individuals that have the liquidity to buy up a lot of these pioneer tokens the complete control and power over this economy. Guys, it doesn't sound interesting to me, okay? I hate to be negative right off the bat here, but I got to be very um, transparent about what I think here and, and deduced here. It sounds like um, something that can be heavily manipulated by individuals that have um, extra liquidity in their in their wallets, okay? So let's take that into consideration. Token distribution, another layer of complicated uh, and almost like they're trying to hide, you know, something in here. They're so overly complicated. Just basically uh, think it like this every time a um pioneer is minted initial minting every um event through proof of minting mechanism another mechanism so every time a pioneer is minted uh, those individuals are going to be given a certain amount of um, tommy tokens so tommy tokens um will be distributed through initial minting so initial minting already existed right so you're going to get three thousand per pioneer so if you own pioneers you're going to be getting some uh, tokens uh, minting smart contract is uh, issues uh, so when they when they're minting the smart contract they're going to issue some tommy tokens uh, 18 000 tommy tokens to initial purchasers of the nft so as soon as you mint that nft you qualify to get a bunch of tommy tokens so already they're making the so the, the almost like the social class that if you uh, can afford the nft you're going to get some tommy tokens and you're going to be rewarded for that so think about it for every pioneer minted an additional 8,000 tommy tokens are minted to a wallet with uh, designated funding and so they're going to take um a, a basically a cut that or some of the tokens every time a new pioneer is minted for the team i guess to a wallet designated funding for whatever reason uh the, the advisors the suppliers the developers are also going to get a kick of those tommy tokens every time a pioneer is minted so another 39,000 tommy tokens are issued issued at the genesis to the core team marketing fund so you can see a lot of these tokens as the the control structure is based on that nft and that's where you people might say like what's going on here nft what like the, the correlation just think about it every time an nft is minted those individuals are going to be awarded with tommy tokens and so is the team okay what percentage percentage are we talking about guys that's obviously uh, again continuation with the concept of vagueness we're going to continue going on you'll see some of the numbers the daily pioneers um nfts will be sold at auction to the highest bidder so on a daily basis more pioneers are going to be issued to, in circulation and obviously the highest bidder which is the individual with the most liquidity are is going to be able to afford those pioneers on year one uh, it's going to be three pioneers per day and little by little after uh like the fourth year or the 10th year pioneers issued per day 10 so this is the thing eventually they're going to be uh issuing more pioneers per day and 
let's see what happens there right so annual budgetary issuance uh, you can see look at all this complication guys i've never seen a tokenomics or a token distribution so convoluted before okay very convoluted the estimated total supply for the initial period of five years okay so after five years this is what this uh, the, the the supply is going to be 18 percent will be issued to the fo founding team that's already significant okay that's a very significant especially that they're undoxed and you don't even know who they really are um there is, like I mentioned, um, you know, a face to the name um, on Twitter with some of his posts, and he does engage with the community. Uh, go check him out. I'm not going to say names, but yeah, um, he's de he's definitely something to look out for, and I would be doing research on his legal case regardless. 7% uh, will be issued to seed investors and initial contributors. Th at the end of the day, what is the fine line between these two types of people, the founding team and the initial investors? Could they be, you know, related? And that's one of the issues that I have here, right? They could be family members. They could be anybody, these initial contributors, right? So if you add this up, that's already a significant amount. Then 33% will be issued to the core team and developers and advisors and marketing and, and this and that and this and that. and the, You know what I mean? You're adding and adding and adding to a bunch of people at Genesis that were involved, right? And these guys have uh, right now a, a significant amount of the total supply, right? Uh, you know, that, uh, after five years. And for me, that's already already a lot now 42 percent will be issued to the public already that's the minority already the general public has the opportunity only to receive 40 percent now of course one may argue the team may argue well 33 this 30 percent is the general public as well not really there's no proof of that we don't know who the marketing team is and additional suppliers additional who are these additional suppliers what, what does that even mean right so the ambiguity here guys and the way they are able to accumulate this these percentages in a lump here bother me bother me significantly okay so um i'm gonna read this i'll, I'll kind of look through this um so business models privacy in future we anticipate that the payments and services on the tommy net will be carried out in tommy um enabling web3 business business models brokerage okay advert uh, yeah advertising leveraging self uh, uh, sovereignty sovereign identity and uh, i'm trying to see if there's any good language here networks to evolve business yeah nothing fluff okay honestly maybe i didn't do a good job explaining this all that could be the case but my argument is this is just a mess ultimately it's a mess there's no clarity here there's not even a pie chart there's nothing here to make this data real there's a uh, it's too complicated it's too uh nft this and that and blah 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 you're trying to make it fun maybe a little interesting but at the end of the day when you're talking about people investing and making money we don't want complication we want clarity okay so let's get back to the website that's the white papers i know i flew through that but hopefully we're able to get the majority of what we're looking for let's quickly look at the website because there was an about section that i wanted to just kind of um i think governance pioneer token products browser no uh about tommy maybe right here learn more maybe down here here it is what is tommy uh what is tommy's uh, the tommy project about restoring people's freedoms okay all this is great stuff where did the idea come from uh why are we anonymous okay today's technology uh, provides both new threats and new freedoms uh in dealing with these threats the regulators have often earned uh basically staking away too many of the people's freedoms so basically they're t they're trying to b give back freedoms which still doesn't mean anything we believe that satoshi i don't even know why they're name dropping satoshi here anonymous he remained anonymous because of totally different reasons than what tommy net is trying to um he, that's a bad correlation so basically rather than the creator we think it's the right uh, in doing so so basically they want to keep themselves anonymous for because they compare themselves with satoshi guys this is crazy like uh, so, you know it, 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 there's no marketing budget for um bitcoin and obviously you saw the way the tokens were distributed where where the majority of them are you know forget it you get what i mean guys it just doesn't make any sense um every team every single team in 2023 needs to be fully doxxed no matter how decentralized you think you are uh there's always a level of centralization and we want to know who is behind it especially when the project is so complicated uh so why should you trust us no trust involved guys i don't even want to read this you should never trust anybody no project is trustworthy none whatsoever okay at the end of the day there, there's always uh, a cat and mouse game in every single tech field and any 
hardware, software, whatever it is, there's always vulnerabilities. You do not trust anybody. Protect yourself all the way. Uh, be critical. Think twice. Look both ways when crossing the road. All right, let's move on. I'm not even going to entertain that. This is a nice decentralized scenario. Lots of nodes or whatever all over the world, which is great. We want to be able to uh, ensure that we don't have a central uh, choke point, which is um, important, of course. Let's talk about some of these um tokenomics for a second um tommy net okay it's at right now three dollars and 25 cents uh market cap about 242 million so it is let's keep out uh large um bitcoin and ethereum out of the way for a second for a you know an altcoin we're getting to a larger size altcoin nonetheless like we're gonna remove all the heavyweights out of here the big layer ones you know the billion dollar market caps i think right now if we think about it could tommy net get to that level that's what we, we really want to find out could it get to a level where we're talking about maybe icp level because i believe icp is at a billion dollar market cap something like that if i'm not mistaken but um does it have that uh, opportunity we'll talk about the projection and you know what's the the possibility um if everything goes well and all this you know if, if, if optimal scenario we'll talk about the optimal scenario obviously the negative scenario is this thing drops to zero but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the fact what about if everything plays out perfectly as to plan where can this thing go we'll talk about that very soon circulating supply does that really matter when the total supply um is at about 160 million units total uh, the circulating supply is at 75 million units but we don't have a max supply which means at any moment more tokens can be issued based on the governance of the dow which for me again like you like i mentioned i don't like the, the power distribution and how the DAO is the power distribution of the DAO. It's not very interesting. Um, and the 24 hour trading volume is decent. Um, we'll get into that trading volume. I think it's above, I think it's about 12% trading volume, which is very good, uh, very active. Um, you know liquidity we can see a lot of exchanges so that's good fully diluted right now is at 340 million dollars guys that is not a lot uh, the reality is not a big project uh, right now if this thing fully diluted if this thing actually meets its goals who knows how big this can be this could be a trillion dollar business at the end of the day but if that's the question if it even gets there okay so let's move on from that i wanted to show you ether scan for a second let's open this to a new tab let's go um I, i've been doing this um significantly here um on the channel doing my deep dives i want to look at the holders and i want to look at the chart and the pie chart to see exactly where these wallets which wallets are holding you can see that right now there's this fat wallet right there that's holding a significant amount of the tokens 35 percent of the tokens are held in this wallet which is a lot and then you got this one which is at about 15 percent another wallet and then you got another one with about 14 percent. if you add all these up guys that's a very scary number okay Okay, so we don't know who these are. Again, remember those three distributions. We have the founders, we got the marketing team, we got this team, the early adopters, the NFT holder. You get all these, you know, Genesis type of investors that at the end of the day, we don't know who they are. The Genesis type of investors are usually close individuals and, you know, VCs, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the way at the top at the beginning. Um, we don't know how many of these tokens uh, of these wallets are owned by them, you know. So for me, this is a big, a bit of an issue. And obviously, you're taking a bit of a risk given that this project is new and it, it's not the newest but it is new and it is trying to get itself off the ground and in this case you'll see a lot of this happening a lot of you know single investors buying up a lot of tokens until it becomes popular then they dump on the market and then the rest of the market picks those up and you get I mean, and then th eventually this kind of grows right but given the fact the way they have that token distribution and we see this right here it's a bit of a red flag for me it's a bit of a red flag to get in too heavy here okay so let's move on from this what else do we have? Let's go on coin uh, market cap for a second here. We had the trading volume. The volume is approximately, uh, yeah, 13, 13, 12 and a half percent in comparison to its market cap, so, which is very healthy. Um, and yeah, guys, I think we covered it all. This was pretty good. So, you know, at the end of the day, TommyNet, we're going to talk about its consensus mechanism because it's a little bit, it's not complicated, but it has a lot to do with the DAO. And of course, as usual, guys, I prepared one of those infographics for you guys. This is it. Go check it out. I'm going to post it on all the socials, on the uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm going to make it as a post, Twitter, um, Telegram, all that. Of course, on the Discord, go check it out. But right now, TommyNet, what is this about? Just my verdict, just my overall consensus, uh, the overview. Of course, it's, it's a Web3 company. It's a Web3 company 
being definitely trying to decentralize the web and the way we um, use the internet, which is something that we need. We, we can't deny that. That is definitely a value proposition that many of us uh, would be interested in. However, this promise to give us such a value, such a, a good thing, sometimes uh, it's too good to be true and too quickly makes us FOMO. And when we have such negativity, sometimes we have some negative aspects that we really need to consider before we get that FOMO. So let's talk about the coin info. We already kind of went through this quickly. You know, the max supply is a bit of an issue. There's no max supply at the end of the day. The, the DAO can issue as many tokens as they please. The ecosystem, this ecosystem is great. We can't deny it. Their objective, what they're trying to achieve is on point. We decentralize everything, the DNS, the browser, the Tommy Pay, the gems, which is the content platform. Great stuff 10 out of 10 if it can achieve that great stuff utility typical utility um, the voting the delegation the payment the domain the hosting you get uh, all the rewards all through the tommy so that's pretty good a bit of convoluted there in the, with the nft and how that plays out and in, in in how they make um let's say they reward the nft holders on a different tier or a different class of holder which for me is kind of problematic making social classes in a decentralized um you know network i don't really like that everybody should have equal participation in a network and, and that's my opinion obviously and proof of stake makes that very difficult okay so that's something to consider and that's why the sec is all over it right the sec is all over that because of the of the whole aspect of having a group of individuals holding or staking the majority of the tokens okay beyond the beyond the point uh the roadmap um uh, there's no roadmap guys on that website however it is on the discord it is there it is clear it's there the objectives are clear for 2023 um i'm not going to show that i'm not going to give that to you because it should be on the website uh, feel free to join the discord i can make that available to you guys there if you're interested but at the end of the day if it's not on their website on a static platform where people can do their research and make it clear and transparent i am not going to be plugging discords right they should put it there they should have it, the web developer a communications officer somebody that does something with regards to their communication and update the website and provide that free and transparent to everybody that goes and visits that website so for me six out of ten even though it is, it is a good roadmap it needs to be on the website you can't cut corners like that the team is completely on docs anonymous unfortunate in fact i should have gave it a, a one out of ten um i I think i was too generous here i don't know what i was thinking the founder has legal issues and some major ones now again i don't know if this is uh, just allegations or whatever the case may be do your own research it's very easy to find it's all over the internet um but this is something that could be troubling for the pr project but it is a DAO, so in that case it has nothing to do with his personal uh, who he is and what he does in his personal life but at the end of the day will it affect price that's my issue will it affect price as investors as people that want to get involved in this project we don't care about his, his personal life at the end of the day we care about the price is it going to dump based on the on the on the fud and that for me is a problematic thing it sounds a bit risky okay so not crazy about the team um and nothing to be said about them because they don't want us to know they're completely anonymous crazy stuff eh okay so the socials uh their followers um kind of taking a bit of a hit slow grind to the downside a little bit on their socials down 59 percent in the last little while with regards to their followers um, you know, not not really cool. They lost a bunch of them, 1.9 thousand followers in the last little while, so not really good. And 56 posts for the last 30 days for them, but still down because in the previous 30 days they were a little bit more active, but not by much, down by 8%. So, you know, maybe they were posting about 60 to 65 posts or something like that in the past. Now they're down to 56. They got to keep it up. They got to keep it social. They got to keep it active. And if I were to make any recommendations, they start, they need to boast the their their, their um, partnerships their partnerships are posted on that website with no clarity and no definition no nothing they're not they they don't seem strategic and valuable at all they're just there for um you know hype and that's not a good thing so if you do have some legit uh, you know um partnerships that are actually valuable they should be posting those on the socials i scrolled and scrolled and found nothing okay uh tokenomics no real max supply own the, the the dow governs the max supply uh, and you know my issue already with regards to the dow it's over complicated um in my opinion none of that was necessary i don't know what kind of value you're actually offering here with that integration of an nft and in fact using the word uh, or the, the 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 term nft is maybe in this bear market a negative people don't want to know anything about nfts 
this is a really bad timing to be talking about NFTs and offering value to an NFT, right? And a lot of us that are newcomers to the space don't even understand what NFTs are. And that's an issue. They just look at the word, they look at their NFT, their, their whatever they bought, and they look at it down 99% from the top and they don't want to do anything with regards to NFTs. So for me, that was not a good thing. Make it simple, make it easy to understand, make the tone tokenomics clear and concise. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, fair because um, it looks a little bit a little bit skewed towards um, holders of those NFTs not really um, interested and of course a large proportion is given to early stakeholders those NFTs guys you looked at those percentages the majority are given at Genesis and the majority um, of the uh, NFT holders are going to be the individuals that have that liquidity to buy those NFTs at such high prices. Now, I know over time, those to those NFTs get released quicker, so the price should come down, potentially, given that, you know, if this project does well, they might go up. It's all about supply and demand, right? If, if people are demanding those NFTs and the supply increases, but um, the demand increases more in comparison to the uh, supply, the price will still go up. So this is something to consider. I just don't like the tokenomics based on the, co uh, the complicatedness and the integration of that nft okay just a quick summary there uh the partnerships vague partnerships no clear strategic partnerships whatsoever it looks like they're there uh just for fun and just because you got a certification company to certify your contract doesn't mean that they're your partners in fact that would be a negative thing for you to say that they're your partners because that means they have a self uh interest there it's a conflict of interest so if they gave you a certification and they're your partner that's something that even still is a negative all right so you got to be really strategic you got to be really clear about your partnership because it, you know if you're not they actually look like a negative guys i feel like i'm roasting this thing i'm grilling it but at the end of the day i want to be transparent okay so exchanges a lot of exchanges even more than these uh, that's great um i should have gave it a higher value uh, i gave it a four but at the end of the day uh, lots of liquidity there of course uh, lots of good trading volume i'm going to update this for to maybe i would say um a, a nine at best okay so think about it like that so far so good for tommy with regards to where it's listed and how much liquidity um investors or traders have um to work with okay so overall guys overall you can read the overview i kind of went through it already you can see that the verdict my verdict is going to be very critical and in fact i, I think I, I, I was somewhat generous here even giving six out of ten right and my price target i'm going to be clear and transparent about this it's only the target is only based if everything pulls through properly and squeaky clean because there's a lot of issues right now. So the price target is right now $40, but I'm gonna explain why, right? The max supply is governed by the Dow. I'm not crazy about that, you know why. Risk of dilution, of course, is the reason the Dow could vote in more tokens for whatever reason, and all of a sudden the price comes down, they buy it up, and then they dump on the market. G giving the whales or the big contributors to the network the, 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 the power to vote in more supply is problematic, okay? So for me, I'm not interested. The de delegated proof of stake is your concern that's this mechanism check this out the de the delegates uh with the most votes are rewarded with the tokens for their work so the dow votes for the delegates and the delegates with the most votes get the rewards guys look more complication and more power to those nft holders not crazy about it right so the only people that um are considered delegates in this case are the with the most votes are the ones that are governed by the dow and the you know the nft ho uh, nft holders are the ones that have the most power in that dow so i'm not crazy about it guys you can see that i'm not happy about it it's not something that i'm interested in layer two internet decentralization great great narrative you know i'm all, all about this narrative you know decentralization freedom of speech uh, allowing us to deploy websites without you know so much red tape and so much uh, control is obviously something that i'm interested in but uh, you know it's got to be the right team uh, ambitious ecosystem very ambitious that could be a positive or a negative a negative in this case when things are too big and too um un, uh, focused it becomes like diluted in itself you know where's the focus here it's a little bit of everything um you know jack of all trades type of thing master of you know none type of thing i i don't know i don't know uh trading volume is good at least 12 percent of the uh, current supply is in, you know basically being traded which is showing a little bit of uh, activity on the network 
great. Token distributing is complicated and problematic. As you can see, th three main wallets hold over 50% of the tokens, and we don't know who those wallets are and what they're all about. And you saw the token distribution, guys. A lot of the, the, the funding, a lot of the percentages of the tokens within the next five years is going to be placed somewhat, somewhat into the control of Genesis individuals, individuals that are basically high stake or high... Um, let's say involvement individuals right and who knows who those people are right they're too up there to be trusted uh, it's not about trust this has nothing to do with trust at the end of the day and only 43 or 40 something percent is for the rest of the community which for me bo is very bothersome okay so founder uh, has legal issues guys that just in that in itself guys we need to do a deep dive on that i'm not going to be touching that here on the channel feel free to do that on your own they have a negative history with other projects um other projects that were deemed as scams and fraud go check it out guys be careful um x has a, a activity is weakening and a lot of the um followers have been on following uh, so maybe there's a correlation there at the end of the day right none of this is financial advice guys i am just telling you what i feel if this thing aims for a bullish target and achieves what it really wants to achieve right if it, we compare it to icp it could do a 5x if we compare it to the all-time highs where we were pretty much um you know way up there with the total market cap way up there it could reach about 35 dollars about a 10x okay and then what about if the total market cap exceeds the previous total at three trillion dollars and we get to four or five i say at least a 40 dollar um target price for sure but overall would you be taking the risk in this project right all projects all investments all um tokens that you buy all trading opportunities have risk and it's about looking at its overall value proposition and doing these deep dives to figure out if the risk is worth the reward and my opinion right here the risk is not the best for the reward so do it as you please guys of course not financial advice i don't give it the greatest rating a six out of ten and i think i was pretty uh, easy going on that one so that's my take all right guys i know you're here to talk about some charts let's take a look at what the price is looking like and then we'll wrap it up for today uh going sideways not the greatest scenario here going sideways um and this is the thing could this be an accumulation phase before we actually Actually break out of this range or are we just showing a bit of weakness or manipulation with these big wicks to the upside and to the downside guys let's look at this in a little bit more detail because at the end of the day this is critical this is where you're gonna make make some decisions are you bullish do you like the fundamentals do you like the value proposition do you like the team do you like what you heard in this deep dive and if you did guys now's not the bad time to buy the dip right that's the reality um if we get a bit of a bounce here at the point of control, you could definitely see that we have a lot of room to grow to the upside, given the fact that there is no resistance, especially of, above, uh, you know, five dollars and twenty cents. So we got to be clear about that. Above five twenty, there's nothing happening, and we can fly to higher levels. And below it, of course, we got to be real about that. Is that below this level, we have very little supply and demand, even though the price actually fell below. That means there's not much volume in that zone. Let's kind of show you what I mean. If you look at the VPBR and you look left we got this price action this price action and then you look at confirmation to see like what type of activity was in here guys there was not much volume in this zone not much volume at all in fact if you look a little bit higher in this zone there was a lot more volume right around here and very similar type of price action and and down here not much volume the price got up with not much volume guys that's not conviction for me look at the volume profile the volume bars right here the price reacted got a retracement to the upside without much volume now this is a typical retracement before a continuation an abc structure before an impulsive move we potentially could be coming down to lower levels here for tommy price action wise i wouldn't be taking risk if you're going to be taking risk you're going to be taking risk uh, based on a rejection and based on a, a, a back test of this blow to confirm this as a, a, a low by getting a confirmation low a higher low at best okay now i did say dcing right here might not be bad because of the point of control and it's all about position size you get in with a small bag 10 percent, 10 percent. you lose fine you put a stop loss fine you walk away if you have some conviction but don't bet the farm guys i still feel like fundamentally there's a bit of work that needs to be done here and i still feel like the price action at the end of the day given the fact that on the daily we're slightly getting to overbought scenario it's very likely that we get overbought and still grind here for a little bit and but look at the macd macd is facing down ema's red histogram bars to the downside not looking really good at all higher highs on the price action let me show you what i got here 
Look at that. Higher highs on the price action um, and the MACD, lower highs on the MACD. No bearish divergence on the RSI, but a clear class A bearish divergence with follow through on the momentum on the MACD. Okay, so this is a, a potentially scary scenario where you could come down and get that back test of previous lows and get that confirmation. What we really want to do is anticipate or get some confirmation that this low was the absolute low and we're not going to make a lower low. If we break below this low, guys, expect a dip to the downside and we're in price discovery and dip discovery where we don't know we're going to be holding support in the near future. So something to consider is that um, we are holding steady right around the zone by a little bit. But guys, be careful. Don't bet the farm. All right, guys, if I've offered you any value in this video, do the channel a huge favor and slap the like button. And of course, I'm going to be live tonight at 730 Eastern where we can continue discussing Tommy and many other projects. If you have any projects you want me to cover, looking at trade setups and fundamentals, feel free to join tonight at 730 Eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action. If you want to follow me on the socials, the links are in the description below. Feel free to join that Discord, guys. Lots of good setups, fundamentals, um, and all that good stuff. Take care, guys. Have a good one. And don't forget, buy the dip. Thank you.